Well, welcome back to Precalculus. This is our prerequisite chapter, and we're working on section 5 on this lesson. And we will be solving equations using graphical, numerical, and algebraic methods. So let's go ahead and get started. To solve an equation graphically, we need to find the x-intercepts, or what's called the zeros sometimes. And to solve an equation numerically, usually we use a table of values to do that. So for our first example, we have the equation x cubed minus x is equal to 1. And we're going to solve it graphically using zeros, graphically using an intersection of two equations, and numerically using a table. So to solve this graphically, um, go ahead and use your calculator. And I have, I have already plugged in my equation x cubed minus x minus 1. These other, other two equations are not highlighted, so they will not graph right now. So the graph looks like that. And then to find the zeros using the TI calculators, you're going to use the blue calculate function, which is on your uh, F4 button. So that's a second function. And we want to calculate the zero, which is option two. So we need to be, um, it says left bound here. We need to be to the left of where it crosses the x-axis and hit enter. Then we need a right bound. So we need to move all the way to the right until we get past that zero mark. All right, then hit enter twice. And so there are zero, you can see, is x is equal to 1.324718. So probably three decimal places is good enough. 1.325 would be sufficient. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, I have um, over here on option A, I just did a screenshot of that. And then option B, graphically using the intersection of two graphs. Now that one I actually did in, on the same calculator and did another screenshot. So I have the similar equations. I have two equations. And here's what they look like. So on this one, instead of using that first equation, I'll turn that one off. And then I'll turn the next two on. So I have the equation x cubed minus x, and then the equation x, or excuse me, y equals 1, and y equals x cubed minus x. And then if I graph those two equations and find the intersection of the two lines, so there's what the graph looks like. So I'm looking for this point right here. So again, let's do second calculate. And this time we want the intersection point, which is option five. There's the first graph, there's the second graph. And it tells us the intersection point of those two graphs is 1.324718, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, and the third option is to use a table. If you're not sure how to use the table function on your calculator, be sure to talk to me in class and I can help you out with that. Here are the screenshots that I got from using three different tables. Just the only difference between these is, is if they're going by 0 0.1, 0 0.01, or 0 0.001 for their x values. So just depending on how precise of an answer you want um, is how you determine that. And you're looking here in the table of values when it switches from a negative to a positive answer, that tells you that there is a zero between those two x values. All right, so by extracting square roots is the next thing we're going to be working on. So in order to extract the square roots from this example, we want to try to get this as um, two perfect squares. So we're going to add nine to both sides giving us this, and then divide by 2. And then since now we have two perfect squares, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And we get 2y plus 3 is equal to plus and minus 4. It's very important that you get both of those answers. Don't forget your plus and minus when you take the square root of 16. All right, then we'll break it up into two sides, two answers. One of them is positive 4, one of them is negative 4. And then go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides, and then divide by 2, and you have your two answers. Completing the square, we'll do a quick review of how to complete the square. So first of all, uh, we need to allow some space between the 6x and the equal sign. And we're going to add the square of a number. And the, that number that we add is always half of that x term. So that's why you'll see here I have 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. And 3 squared is the number we're going to add to both sides of the equation. So in blue, I have my original equation. But then I've left some space and I'm adding, on the left hand side, I always write the number with the power of 2. I never write it as the number squared. 
And on the right hand side I'll go ahead and square the number because it's going to combine. And you'll see why in just a second. So when I factor this, the number that goes right here is always this number before you square it. So that's why I never actually square it on the left hand side. Now we can take the square roots of both sides. x plus 3 is plus and minus 4. Break it up into two answers. One is positive 4, one's negative 4. And then go ahead and solve it for x and you have your two solutions. All right. Why don't you pause the video and try this one on your own. This one has one extra step and that is you have a 2 in front of your x squared term. So see if you can try this one on your own and then come on back and I'll show you the solution. All right, hope you gave that a try. Let's take a look. First thing we need to do is to move our 12 to the other side. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and divide everything by 2. So we're going to get x squared plus 5 halves x equals 6. Then we're going to take half of that x term, half of the linear term. Half of 5 halves is 5 fourths. And again, I don't square it here, but I do square it on the other side. Factoring, we get x plus 5 fourths, the quantity squared. Now 6, um, when you multiply by 16, gives you 96. And then we have our 25 sixteenths which gives us 121 sixteenths, which is a really nice number because it's a perfect square. Take the square root of both sides, divide them into two solutions. One of them is positive, one of them is negative, and then go ahead and solve for each side, giving you your two solutions. Quadratic formula. Hopefully you remember the quadratic formula. If not, there's a reminder for you right there. And first of all, we need to put this thing in what's called standard form. And standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So we need to put this in standard form so we can figure out what a, b, and c are. So let's combine our like terms, get everything on the left and a 0 on the right. That gives us a is 3, b is negative 8, and c is negative 10. Plugging those values into the quadratic formula and simplifying a little bit. Now at this point we don't know if this is a perfect square so plug it in your calculator. It doesn't turn out to be a perfect square but it does have one perfect square contained in it. There's a 4 that can come out so that comes out as a 2 and then 46 is just 2 times 23 and 23 is prime. So this thing's not going to simplify any further inside the radical but each of these whole numbers do contain a factor of 2 so we need to divide that out giving us 4 plus and minus the square root of 46 all over 3. And then factoring. Remember factoring we need a 0 on the right so that's the first step. And now we're looking for factors of 7 that differ by 6. What are the factors of 7 that when you subtract them give you 6? Well those are 7 and 1 and this tells you the sign. The signs are different and the bigger number is Plus. And it looks like I might have an error in here, so I need to correct that really quick. So this one is plus right there, and then this one right here should be a minus. See if I can erase that quickly. Good thing I caught. No, it's not going to let me erase that. So go ahead and um, make that. Ah, there's more than one way to, to do this. How about this? That'll work. Minus. This tells us the signs are different. This tells us the sign of the bigger number. And the bigger number is definitely 7, so it's x plus 7 and x minus 1. So I'll bet you I have some more errors here. So we want x plus 7 is equal to 0. And x minus 1, see if we can get that out of there. A few little edits as we go. x minus 1 equals 0. So then our two solutions will be x equals negative 7 and x is equal to 1, and that should be a positive 1. There we go. Glad I caught that at this point. Um, next problem over here, again, we need to subtract 15 from both sides. Excuse me, it's already got the 15 there. We just need to find factors of 15 that add to 8. 5 and 3 are factors of 15 that add to 8. This sign, because it's positive, tells us that both of our factor signs are the same. They're either both plus or both minus. This sign tells us what the signs are. Now we need to just set them both equal to 0 and solve, and we get x is 5 and x is 3. 
All right, this one says solve by finding the intersections, and we have an absolute value equation. So to solve algebraically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add 8 to both sides, and then we're going to divide it by 2. Now at this point, what this is saying when we have an absolute value is it's the distance from 0 on a number line. So anytime you have an absolute value, it's like a distance. So we could have a distance of 27 halves by going either to the right or left. So what we're really going to do is take what's inside the absolute value and set it equal, one of them is equal to the positive value and one's equal to the negative value, and then solve them separately. So on the left-hand side, when we subtract 5, that's really 10 halves, and we get 17 halves, and then dividing by 3 gives us 17 sixths. On the right-hand side, we're going to subtract 10 halves again, giving us minus 37 halves, and dividing by 3 gives us 37 sixths. So that's how we solve that one algebraically. If we want to solve the absolute value graphically, we can do that as well. And the way you get that on your calculator, let's see if I can pull this up again. And let's see. I'm not sure if it's going to let me do that. There we go. Okay, the way we're going to do that on our calculator, if this will... Yeah, it's not going to co cooperate with me, is it? I have to reopen it. There we go. Now it should be good. Bring it back over here. And I'll just show you real quickly how to find the absolute value on your calculator. So we need to put this into y1. So y1 is equal to 2 times the absolute value. Now the absolute value is found using the math key right here on the left. If you hit the math key and then we want number, so move over one place, and then we want the ABS function, and then we need to put in there 3x plus 5 and our parenthesis, and then minus 8, and hit enter. So there's our first equation, and then we can also put just 19 for the second function, and then go ahead and graph those two. So there's the absolute value one, and we're not going to see the second one because we have our window set incorrectly. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and set the window so that we can see that. That looks a little better. And you can see the they cross twice, so there should be two solutions. So let's do a second calculate. The intersection point is 5. And the first curve, okay, we have that one. Second curve, that one. And enter. So one of our solutions is 2.83. That would correspond with the solution that we had over here, the 17.6. If you divide that, you'll get 2.83 repeating. So the last solution then, if we do that one, let's do second calculate again, the intersection, which is 5, and we just need to move this to the left for our curves, get it over on this side, and we'll hit enter there, enter there, and there is negative 6.16 repeating and that corresponds to the negative 37 sixths. And I think I had some other stuff under here. Find the intersection. There's the picture of the graphs. And that will do it for this lesson. We'll see you next time.